Folks at home, welcome back to the Backyard Bass Pond. We are finally recovering from Hurricane Sally. We got the pond back in order. We even got the fence rebuilt. And guess what? We've got another hurricane coming through tonight. Man, I'm so ready for 2020 to be over. But one of the most common questions I've been getting here lately is, when are you gonna move Moby into the Backyard Pond? So I decided to dedicate a video, or at least most of a video, to Moby. We're going to talk about his future and when he's going to get in the pond as well as his past. A lot of you guys may not have been subscribed to the channel when we first caught Moby. So let's take a quick look at the life of Moby and how he became who he is today. So it was definitely apparent from the first day we caught him that he was one of the most aggressive fish I'd ever seen. Even as a little fingerling bass, he tried to eat a minnow that was almost his size. He's running. Got it. Ah. Lost him. Yeah, he had it. It's my, and it my. Oh no! What did I get? Oh, I caught a little bass. Look at that! I thought I missed him. Look at this. That size minnow. That is incredible, right there. Liz, what do you think? Yeah. We gotta, we gotta keep go him. <laughs> gotta keep him. Liz agrees. And I knew we had to keep him, so we started him out in our 55-gallon planted aquarium. Let's see what he thinks about it. <laughs> He's so much smaller than Bonnie and Clyde were. We put them in. The catfish is probably going to be roughly the same size. And uh, that's why we didn't want to put that crappie in here. He's just a little too big. We want to be able to keep these for a while. As you can see, he fits right in. He'll have plenty of hiding spaces at, at that small size. Good comparison. Yeah, they're the exact same size, I'd say. The catfish and the bass. Check in and see how Moby's doing. I cannot keep up with this guy's appetite. Look at him, he'll swim back and forth, opening and closing his mouth like he's starving. I feed him three worms a night, every now and again a cricket, and he just keeps eating. So I think it is finally time to drop him a minnow in. All right, not sure if you can see how big the minnow is, but we're gonna drop it in, it may go quick. Yep, it's gone. look at that belly so we're going to test some of the smallest lures that are on the market today and i have no doubt that moby's going to eat some of them so, but we'll at least get to see his reaction to different style baits let's drop it in all right first lure is a cricket and i can already tell you moby he's wound up he's ready to eat so i got liz helping me out we're going to drop it in you going left or right liz I'm going to the right. all right we're going to the right oh yes Definite strike. Let's go to the left. <laughs> All right, pull it on out. Oh, we have to. <laughs> and it was right around this time we ended up catching his other tank mate, McCoy. And McCoy was almost identical in size to Moby. But look at the difference in their mannerisms. You could tell Moby's always wired up and extremely aggressive. So it didn't take long to figure out that feeding time was going to be an issue because Moby would eat all of his food and all of McCoy's food because he was just faster. All right, now we are going to do a live bait test. We got minnows and worms. We're going to drop them at the same time and see which one they prefer to eat. All right, Liz, let's go now. All right, so Moby got the minnow. Oh, and he got the worm. Man, you are one hog. <laughs> <laughs> the other bass is hiding out. He's right over there. Let's drop him another worm in. Oh, man, Moby ate that one too. He's got two worms and a minnow in his mouth right now. He's a hog. That's a big one. Both of them are going to have a time with that one. Gosh, Moby's going to try to eat it. <laughs> Moby, why do you eat so much? All right, no more feeding for him. Let's dr drop one in while Moby's got that in. I know Moby can't eat anything else. The other little bass should be able to get that one. Yep, worked out good. And <laughs> look at Moby. This is how fish become 10 pounders. Now I'd been raising pet bass my entire life and I'd seen a lot of stuff, but one day we were feeding Moby and one of his favorite things to do was jump out of the tank and grab worms out of the air. So we basically did it every night.
and one day he jumped a little too high at just the right angle and hit the side of the tank and flopped out. And after he fell about three to four feet, hit the ground, we picked him up, dropped him right back in the tank. And he never skipped a beat and went right back to eating. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. If you had a pond full of mobies, you could just cast out there, catch the fish, release them, and turn around and cast again and catch them again. Like, this does not happen with any other fish. His appetite and eating that next meal is the only thing he cares about. And unfortunately, McCoy got sick a few months after this and didn't make it. And thankfully, that's the only pet bass we've ever had not make it in a tank. Rest in peace, McCoy. McCoy's out of... <laughs> After the laser, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I don't want to tease them too much. But I do see we have another appearance from Bolt. That's our snail. And it didn't take long with that kind of appetite for Moby to start getting really big. So we started introducing new species to him. This was the first crawfish he had ever seen. Even though the crawfish was probably too big for him to eat, Moby was going to try to get one of those pinchers. Oh, Moby's backing down. He gave him a good quick hit. Got him again. And then over the course of the next couple months, his staple diet was a mixture of crickets, worms, and, and small minnows. Two. Oh, might have been three. Boop, three. Thinking about it, thinking about it. Folks, look at how much Moby has grown. He is a tank now. He, it looks like he doubled in size from the time we left. You hungry, Moby? Let's start it off. And then we could see he was quickly going to outgrow the tank, so we moved Bonnie and Clyde into our new backyard pond, and it was time to move Moby from our 55-gallon tank to the 300-gallon aquarium. Got him. So I wanted to do a test. I wanted to put some minnows in the 300 gallon aquarium and drop Moby straight out of the net into the aquarium and see if he would attack the minnows. So he started off by just getting a little acclimated, but as soon as he saw the first minnow, attack mode. <laughs> Does not surprise me one bit. It doesn't matter if he's in a puddle, tank, or a pond. He is always aggressive. Oh, here he goes. This is his first venture across the aquarium and now they meet one on one. What do you guys think about each other? Uh-oh. Moby's flexing on him. Oh, Moby's going for the minnow. <laughs> that is incredible. That is incredible. He said you had a minnow sitting under your tails. I'm going to come up there and eat him. This is unbelievable. Moby, what do you think about a bluegill? I don't know for sure that Moby's ever seen a bluegill. We caught him when he was a hatchling. So he's probably never seen a fish like this before. So now Moby had a little bit of room to grow. He definitely started eating every shad in sight and started packing on the weight. All right, drop him in this. All right, there he is. Gosh, he just went over there and crushed him. Look at the claw sticking out. Look at that. Moby just crushed that crawfish way faster than I thought he would. Fingers off, but we're going to see if we can get a little air time. How about that? Because... I literally can't put my hand up here without him smashing it. I hate sticking my thumb down in there every time. I <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> Moby, you are too much, buddy. You are way too much. Just let me get the top off and I'll feed you. I promise. All right, now that we're all caught up, let's talk about Moby's future plans. So we've got a backyard pond with our other two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde, and it. I never wanted to put Moby in there because he's so aggressive. I didn't know how they would all interact. And so we just bought a new farm. We're building a five acre lake. And right now, as soon as the lake gets built, I think we're going to stock it with bait and move Bonnie and Clyde into the five acre lake. And that'll be when we move Moby into the backyard pond. Leave some comments down below if you'd like to see this or vice versa. Put Moby in the five acre lake and leave Bonnie and Clyde in the backyard pond. And either way, whichever fish ends up going in the five acre lake, we're going to try to put a tracking device on it so we can always track its movements throughout the lake and know where it's at. 
All right, now it's time for a farm update. The farmers came through and got all the remaining peanuts and it was pretty cool. One of the farmers let Sarah and I take a lap around in his tractor. Here's a quick look at how they pull them in and the peanut hay is removed from the peanuts and all the peanuts get stored in the hopper. And as soon as the hoppers get full, they have these offloader trucks come around that collect the peanuts and then they take them and dump them in an 18 wheeler. And I learned that most of the peanuts on this property will be used to make Snickers. But overall, really cool experience on watching that process. And just like that, all the peanuts are gone and man, this is the first time I've seen the farm with nothing on it and it is a lot of open land. Got a lot of projects coming up here in the future. And I was finally able to capture some video footage of the fox squirrel that we call Foxy. So Foxy is basically like a pet that comes out here every day to the farm and eats all the peanuts. And I'm sure that Foxy is gonna be very disappointed that all the peanuts are gone now. Also, a lot of you have been asking about the turtles. I got one quick clip of Master Splinter. He's one of the five baby turtles that made it over to the big pond. He hangs out on this rock every day with Ranger. I'll try to get more clips of all the other baby turtles in an upcoming video. But that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure you're subscribed. That way you can follow along with all of our pet bass and our new farm pond coming up here in the future. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time. Can tell you people they were the devil's children.